uh, moving on to the YouTube videos, let's jump on to those, the videos that were just released today, kind of break down what we can see from these and uh, see what's happening. Artemis. It's Aries. Poisonous? <laughs> Are they really Greek? We don't know. This week is our second week of 600 fans joining us. And we also got to explore what some of our cast do on their downtime. And of course, we had the wonderful chosen tradition of weather, but this time not like a massive thunderstorm, rain and sleet. Please. Yep, so this is week three, uh, just so you guys know. So we're a couple weeks behind now, which kind of always happens with The Chosen. Um, they're kind of always adding new things or maybe some Sundays, for example, on Mother's Day, they posted a video from uh, a scene of season four. So they were focused on that rather than, um, uh, yeah, rather than um, doing the behind the scenes stuff. So anyway, let's continue on. <laughs> yes, but on the plus side, Leander, Dion, and Fatih are here. So this is those were shots from the feeding of the five thousand um, just a second ago. There, can I? What does this do? Oh gosh, I kind of ruined everything, didn't I? Joining us, and we also got to. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> and we also. I thought I could skip. I can. I can. I can. Okay. 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 Plus side, Leanne. So these are all shots from the Feeding the 5000 uh, in Texas when we were there t almost two years. Like, yeah, two years ago now. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, this was uh, obviously Leon, um, Dion, Leander, and um, and Fatia. I didn't forget her name this time. I've been spending all week saying it in my head. <laughs> and, uh, and they're here doing the Feeding the 5000, the, the leaders of basically the three kind of groups that are here, the Nabataeans um, and the Gentilish groups that are here, the Greeks here. Under Dion and Fatia are here. Yeah, these are the Greeks that you saw at the end of season three. We're gonna talk to them about. <laughs> So this is Jale, who plays uh, the woman with the issue of blood. Let's see what these Greeks really know. It's pop quiz time. The Greeks versus the disciples. <laughs> this is a funny section. I like this section, actually, of the video. We're live on the streets of Jerusalem with Greek people, and we have a Greek quiz. Who is the goddess of love? That would be Aphrodite. Easy, Aphrodite. Uh, Aphrodite yes. Wow, ding, 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 ding for this lady. Okay, how about the god of war? Artemis. He's not Greek. Don't let him confuse you. Greek god of water. Neptune would be the Roman name. <laughs> I love this. I grew up, like, as a kid, I was so fascinated with, like, mythology, Roman and Greek mythology. And so I would, I would definitely be acing this test as well. <laughs> and the uh, Greek name would be... Poseidon. Poseidon. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe he forgot that. <laughs> Has a trident. Pint. Oh, Poseidon. 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 Are they really Greek? Hey, we don't I'm know. Not... Hey, listen, answer me this, okay? Look up there, man. All right, what kind of columns are those? They are ionic columns. Those are ionic. Look it up. Andrew with his sass today, ladies and gentlemen, live on the streets of Jerusalem. Take it to you, Durbin. How has the <laughs> so these three being back is actually a pretty unique thing within the whole scene of the chosen, but specifically biblically, they've tied them in for a very specific reason, and that is John chapter 12. So if we see here, let me fix this again. I'm gonna have to fix it when I go back. This is so annoying. Okay. <laughs> so this is what they're pointing to uh, in John chapter 12. This is basically what happens here and what's happening in the season five uh, area here. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Okay, so these Greeks come to Philip first, which is exactly what we've seen in the behind the scenes. These Greeks come up to Philip and Andrew, actually. Uh, and then Philip and Andrew decide to take them to Jesus. Okay, so that's basically what happens here. Now, in this video, they're going to kind of give us a little bit more of a time frame of how this is happening or where this is happening. Uh, um, but this is where it's being pulled from in scripture is John chapter 12, verse 20. So that gives you a bit of an idea of what's actually happening here biblically uh, as we get into this. And I fix this screen because it's going to bug me uh, one more time. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, close. Close. 
close? Close enough. Okay, there we go. <laughs> the feeding of the 5,000 impacted the faith of your characters. Dion is a conservative guy. He sees the world in a certain way, but seeing the miracle, Jesus performing that, opened him up and... Uh, <laughs> he lost his accent there. He's, he's doing so well, but he just lost it right at the end. Uh, he's ready here for Passover and to have another Jesus encounter. So these Greeks are experiencing Passover for the first time. In that biblical reference that we just saw in John chapter 12, we're seeing as these Greeks are coming and they're experiencing Passover, they are essentially converts to Judaism. Okay, so you have to understand that the chosen does some weird things in terms of what they do with Gentiles in the show itself. But in scripture, the apostles, they pretty much expected that the truth, the way Jesus, the gospel, this was meant for Jewish people. Basically, God had to tell them later on, like, hey, no, this isn't just for you. This is for everybody. For example, Cornelius in Acts chapter 10 and 11 there, we see that Cornelius is a Gentile who feared God and loved him, but he knew nothing about God essentially. And so then uh, Peter came and they all spoke in tongues and there was basically Pentecost number two with the Gentiles, right? And so here it would be very it would be a, a really interesting thing seeing all these Greeks convert to Judaism, but they're following Jesus's ways rather than the traditional Jewish ways, if that makes sense. So, um, it, really, really interesting stuff. So, your new converts, can you speak to maybe how your characters are feeling walking into this worship? Because remember. Christianity doesn't exist anymore. Uh, it, it's it's it, it, not that it doesn't exist anymore, but it doesn't exist yet. Right during this time, there's no there's no the way that doesn't come until Jesus is is killed and, and resurrected. So it's a they would have been converted to Judaism here. Thing for the first time, getting ripped off. A little shocking because what he taught us in the. So let's let's hear what they said again there real fast. Capitalist is it's all about your heart and your. Uh, I don't like this. I, w I want to. I should just watch this on YouTube next time because it's a bit better, uh, bit better controls. Um, all right, let's go back to that. Listen real, qu real carefully here. Feeling walking into this worship thing for the first time, getting ripped off. A little shocking because what he taught us in the Decapolis is it's all about your heart and your faith. And so Durbin gives us a little bit of a hint towards the scene here. As they walk into the market, they walk into Solomon's portico and they're or in this market here and they're getting ripped off by the people selling the Passover wares, okay? So coming to this spectacle. So right here is our first look at what looks like to be some traders. Um, looks a little bit like coffee, but it's not. <laughs> so here are some traders. I can't tell if this is a money changer or if this is just a different type of trader. Definitely looks like a money changer. And so this is where I would expect to see Jesus flipping the tables uh, and you know picking up the whip and whipping people. Uh, this is probably a foreshadowing to that moment right there as everybody is trading their money for the temple currency in order to do their sacrifices and all that kind of stuff within the temple. Seems a little contrary to what we've learned. It was a beautiful line. I'm not. <laughs> beautiful. It's not as bad when, when you don't deliver it like that. 600 people. <laughs> so Sean and Dallas, they're talking about a line that, that Shmuel had um, saying that basically Sean messed up on a line or delivered it not the way that Dallas was envisioning it uh, there. Interesting. I love seeing the little behind the scenes moments like that. Being background, you never know what could. So here again, we're seeing the six of those people that we just saw in the previous scene. We see Philip, Andrew, Tamar, Fatia, Dion, and Leander as they are headed probably towards the temple, uh, get, getting out of this market here. Stop filming even for a minute. So here is where we see, um, Ramus' father, Kofni. And so uh, this is really interesting as well. Again, I'll rewind because he says something important here as well. 600 people being background. You never know what could stop filming even for a minute. So for a quick weather report, we go to Jalay on the set. That's right, Chris and Jalane. We have a cloud above, so we have to wait to shoot because there's been a change in the light on the actor's face. 
So this is a really interesting scene as well that we get in the behind the scenes. First of all, this guy in the red over in the corner, we saw him in the behind the scenes quite a few times this week. He seems to be a new character, maybe a temple administrator of some sorts, some other important character. I don't think he's going to be core, but he's going to be an important character for at least a few scenes here. Of course, we see Yusuf and we see Mary Magdalene talking with Yusuf. Remember the last time that they kind of like interacted right um for the most part was not uh, was other than spoilers spoilers not really but kind of spoilers um in lazarus's house was the last time but then previously to that was like all the way in season one right was the last time that they were even really interacting with each other uh whether that's in episode uh, two or episode six right um, and so we're really, we're seeing this, this interaction, which would have been really interesting between Mary and Yusuf here. Uh, I wonder kind of what's going on. Really, really interesting stuff. Faces. <laughs> you enjoying experiencing this chosen weather? Now, how does the rain and the cold affect your performance? When they say action, it doesn't matter because the Lord blesses us for being here. Life and it's a good attitude. Good attitude. <laughs> the streets of Jerusalem, it's looking a little dim. Camera moves. Okay, great. Got that. It's raining it's and it's freezing. Run. <laughs> So we looked at this footage, you know, two weeks ago, um, whenever this was first posted, but yeah, definitely rain broke out and they had to stop for the day. <laughs> there you go. This is day, you know what, I've lost track of the days. And it's raining. <laughs> what is that? Sleet. It's almost May, Utah. Sleet. <laughs> <laughs> A few moments later. I'd say that was about an hour, an hour delay from the rain and we're back in. And as soon as you hear her say you. So again, I like to pause on these different scenes to see who's here. We got Gadara, um, a bunch of other random people here. We've got Chris pointing in on the Pharisees there. Step into your spots. Now we're shooting smaller scenes today because it's freezing. Again, we've got Mary Magdalene. Cold, and now they're moving quickly because the rain is picking up. We're gonna talk to the fans though and see how they're handling it. Today we are the sodden chosen. Oh. <laughs> All the chosen fans love their names. Like they've named the donkey that <laughs> that Jesus was riding in on. Uh, they named obviously they give themselves names all the time. It's just it's so funny to see. Sad and sack, sad. Are you rolling? They're holy week, so we're holy rollers. One, two, three. We are the holy rollers. <laughs> we have no more for background. Go ahead. Ever wonder what actors do during their downtime? What's up, everyone? I'm Abe Bueno Gelad. First of all, let's talk about these stairs. Usually, I'll just like hit my shin really hard. Then I go, ah. You'll notice too, I don't think a lot of people have talked about this, but Abe actually changed like his actor name, right? He went from Abe Martel to Abe Bueno Gelad. Um, and so a little bit different there a while ago. Oh, this is my trailer. <laughs> Weird. As you can see, I set my couch up in a very specific way. I like to. But mostly, I'll just chill on the couch. I will open up my laptop and look. Oh, that's not. <laughs> just a picture of Jonathan Rumi. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I, that's not mine. Then I come over here to my trusty little desk area and I write, You people are so rude. How could you ever let me hit my shin on those stairs? Yours truly, Big James. Send that. And that will lead us to the bathroom area. We have a really. <laughs> Thank you so much, Timothy, for those five gifted members. You should have gotten a notification if you got a membership from Timothy. Uh, basically, what he's given you is a free month uh, membership in order to rewatch these live streams and to support us here on the on the, the uh, Chosen Sleuth. And so thank you. Thank you for that. Appreciate it a ton. Uh, the green names are all members who support... Um, support our channel monthly basically um and so thank you thank you appreciate that really cool sink here sometimes i just run my head under it and remind myself of how cool i am where i will feel really guilty for the email and i'll probably get a little bit of indigestion and have to sit here and think about what i've done and then um that's it and where are you from? Mojave Desert, California. Oh. Little town, Richmond. Okay, yeah. So how are you handling the cold right now and the rain? I am so excited. 
He looks good though. I like this outfit a lot actually. I did. I don't even know we're called. I'm loving it. You're loving it? Yeah. <laughs> My wife doesn't love it. What is it about the chosen that inspires you to come out in this cold, cold rain? When you've been a Christian a long time and the Bible kind of gets old, the chosen comes and then you read the Bible again. It's wonderful. Everybody here handled the cold weather and weird. <laughs> The only thing I would say about that is it gets uh, old. The chill I don't know if the Bible ever gets old. <laughs> I, I would say if the Bible's getting old for you, you may be reading it incorrectly. <laughs> I know we've probably heard a lot of these stories and different things like that, but God is always moving and, and there's no way in your lifetime that you could juice everything that you can juice out of the Bible. Uh, nobody has and nobody will. So uh, definitely I would say uh, that's the only thing I'd maybe correct a little bit there on that one. Anyway, other than that, we do have a bonus video this week as well, which we're going to check out as well. This one has to do with the assistant director, Adam Drake. And so I hope you like what you're watching so far, but if you want to see the entire live stream, which is over two hours long, and we spoke about so much in that, then you can go to snipesupport.com. And this is the best way to help support us to continue to make videos like like this and to continue to spend dozens of hours every single week just researching about the chosen and other christian media projects really truly it's what we love to do and we want to continue to do it so if you want to support us in that go to snipesupport.com and that would really help us out anyway let's get back to the video thank you so much for checking out the app where you will find more exclusive content just for you like this crew highlight so these crew highlights are actually really, really interesting because it gives us a behind the scenes look at who is making the show. And obviously they're gonna focus on kind of the upper echelon of people that are kind of going through things. And then they'll probably give you a look at like, what does filmmaking actually look like? Here are the cameramen, here are the PAs, here are the blah, 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 blahs, right? Here's the guy that's getting focused for the camera, all that kind of stuff. But Adam is obviously a massive, massive part of this production. He's been in a ton of stuff in the, in the past, either as an actor or director or a bunch of other things in the past. Um, a lot of Christian stuff, actually. Uh, so really, really cool player here within the scene. And um, he obviously does an amazing job. He's really, really killed it uh, in, in terms of how do he organizes everything and kind of goes through things for The Chosen specifically. So really, really glad he's part of the team. Of Adam Drake, our assistant director. Check out who he is and what he does to make all of this whoa, happen. <laughs> you don't want to miss it. I will say too, they're stepping up their game for the BTS uh, as well. It's definitely looking better. And I think the editing is getting better. It's getting more cleaner. Um, yeah, fun stuff for sure. I'm glad that they're kind of upping their game a bit as far as the BTS is concerned as well. Three versus three, three right here, baby. We'll do one more lineup here before we go. Can you do a lineup of camp with first team, please. Sure. Tell us a little bit about what the assistant director does. Well, I start with the schedule originally, so I get, I'm one of the first ones to get the script, and then I take that and put it into a schedule. That's a hard job, man. You have, <laughs> you have this whole entire script, and you have to determine when every single scene, every single shot will be filmed. Ah, oh, that's so crazy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I could ever handle doing that. That's insane. Anybody got any questions, concerns about any of that? My job is safety to make sure we, we kind of get together in the mornings, know our plan for the day, and then achieve that plan. And then once we start filming, then it's keeping us on that schedule, kind of telling everybody what, where to go and what to do. You know, especially on these days, there's about 800 people on set. So all I do all day is just yell things out, and people bring me waters, Red Bulls. I don't actually do anything. I just yell things. Whatever. <laughs> Right here, I yell it. Uh, <laughs> locations. I'm seeing into the court of women. Straight back from the door, I see trash cans and chairs. Let's lose that, please. You're not just the assistant director anymore. You've been upgraded to a producer as well. Like, what does that look like for you? Being a co-producer just uh, makes me more involved with some of the decisions as well, of just the logistics. It was things I was already kind of doing, but it was just a nice bump up credit for continuing to do what I'm doing. Let's go back there. I always like watching the... the uh... Doing, but it's not necessarily... A What's happening here? Thank you so much for. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let me fix this. I always like looking in the backgrounds of these different scenes, seeing what's going on. Obviously, we saw that one earlier. Let me go back. You're too close to the light. It makes me more involved with some of the decisions as well, of just the logistics. It was things I was already kind of doing. Yeah, so here we're seeing this big group scene out here. I think this is when Jesus is going to be flipping the table. Um, interesting stuff here. I wonder why they have the table up on Apple boxes there in the background. You can kind of see that um, right here. 
See the table on Apple boxes there? Makes it a bit taller, uh, probably for a very specific shot, maybe for Jesus flipping it there. I don't know, maybe. But it was just a nice bump up credit for. We see some uh, different outfits behind as well. These guys in kind of robes, these golden robes here. Continue to do what I'm doing, but it's not necessarily a, a new job or anything. What do you do about Delane standing in front of that light? Say, hey, Delane, get out of the light. You're too close to the light. She doesn't listen. So then what I do is I go, hey, Sam Jenkins, can you go take care of that, please? Right. I'll be like, yeah. Let's roll, sound. We're filming this on a Monday, <laughs> and what we are filming is the aftermath of a scene that has caused a lot of destruction in the market. Okay, so this is where we get a lot more hints uh, as to where this is lined up in the show. So like we talked about in the previous YouTube video, we've got these six characters that are all here, right? <clears throat> and so we know that this has happened after the table flipping scene in the temple. That's what Durbin is alluding to here. There's been a bunch of destruction, basically. That's Jesus flipping the tables and whipping people getting all the livestock and people out of the temple area, uh, cleansing the temple. Okay, there's been a bunch of destruction there. Um, and so this is after that has happened, which is interesting because I thought this would have happened before, but perhaps we're going to get a scene of the the three, um, Leander, Dion, and Fatia, in the temple first on their own, and then they come to uh, Philip and Andrew here. Yeah. But then later in the week, we are filming the destruction that happens. So how do you puzzle those things together and keep the continuity? Well, normally we do that in order. And when I made the original schedule, it was in order. Then other things come into play that mess that up, right? This was the one and only that had to go before. And, that was and then here we get some more close-ups of uh, Rama's father at their Kofni. It was because of an actor's schedule. They could only shoot this week. So it seems like he's talking about Kaufney there. He says, well, originally we were going to do it in order, but we had to flip things around because one of the actors could only shoot this week. And then the camera went straight towards Kaufney for a couple different shots there as he's saying that, which alludes us to, hey, Kaufney could only shoot this week, so we needed to shoot this then, and we couldn't move things around. That makes perfect sense as we've only seen Kaufney for one of the weeks uh, so far, and we've seen him in a couple of different scenes at least. Um, and so we haven't seen a ton of him, uh, but it does make sense that he shows up only for that one week if that's only when he could shoot. I just want to like quadruple check, check myself on like everybody that's supposed to be there is there. Friday of this week, we're supposed to be filming the destruction. You were asking if you could flip. Which is the flipping of the tables. And he says flip in this sentence. It to Thursday and how much of a problem would that cause? Why are you debating about flipping it to Thursday? Uh, whether Why are you using the word flip so much, Chris? <laughs> as usual so we're exteriors the whole time we're here in utah daylight dependent and friday's looking really cloudy and possibly rain what we're shooting thursday could technically shoot in cloudy or a rainy day what we're so again we're seeing some behind the scenes there as well with the pharisees and mary magdalene so it looks like we've got yusuf and shmuel talking to mary magdalene which is really really interesting i don't know if we've ever had shmuel interacting with mary magdalene other than the possession is that true I think it might be. I don't think we've ever had Shmuel interacting with Mary Magdalene other than the possession and Lazarus's house. We're shooting Friday can't because it has to match. So here again, we're getting another angle of what we talked about previously. We see Big James and John in the background actually running through the city, kind of pushing people out of the way and they are running towards the temple. Monday. So I would flip Friday to Thursday. So then Thursday and Monday would match weather-wise and Friday would be your cloudy day. So that's a constant juggle. So basically, you are a puzzler, <laughs> and as the whole season is unfolding, depending on weather, depending on actors, depending on anything that could happen. Yeah, really interesting stuff. I love, um, yeah, I could never, ever, ever do his job, like ever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like maybe I could, but dude, I would hate it so much. You are putting together and re-putting together the schedule. So what are you looking at here? Nice. Tomorrow's. It reminds me a lot of what I did when I was in ministry, when I was a, a worship pastor, because you would always have to move around people on the schedule or move around days or move around songs or do everything and just schedule all the time. That was, you know, a large percentage of the, the job was just moving things around, moving people around, managing people. Ugh, it it would have been so annoying <laughs> to do on this scale. Oh my goodness. 
Phillips call sheet. So we go over the next day's call sheet just to make sure it's good. We do it in the morning and then we do it again at lunch and kind of review it until we release it in the day because this is our Bible for shooting. You have 600 fans in background that are moving through this extremely narrow hallway. I, I feel a little claustrophobic. It's like a camel being thread through the eye of a needle. I wonder if he said that on purpose as well. Uh, it's like a camel being thread through the eye of a needle. It's a very specific phrase. So I wonder if that is something that, that's going to be shared uh, later on as well. Uh, and if he put that in there on purpose, I wouldn't put it past Chris to do something like that for sure. So now your task is I handle more of like first team. So uh, first team as in our cast. So the cast does it when we do go to a new setup. I get cast out of there, put the second team in there, which are the stand ins, put them in, make sure they're lined up with camera, make sure we're all good to go, then pull second team out, put first team back in and then get ready to shoot while Mitch is handling all the background moving them around. So what surprised you about some of the scenes you filmed last week? What surprised me is how smooth it went. I mean, we had so many factors of things that could go wrong and that were challenges and we did a lot of like one takes and we'd rehearse it and then we'd do one take and it was perfect there's Atticus he seems to be running somewhere if this is them filming the flipping of the tables back then then he's probably running towards the temple uh, seeing what the commotion is about but he's not in his full Roman garb so he's obviously trying to be a little bit more subtle than than he was in the uh, previous scene that we've seen him in from the behind the scenes so <clears throat> Yeah, interesting stuff. I do wonder how much we're going to see of Atticus this season. Um, yeah, really cool stuff. And uh, and that's just hard to do when you're doing stunts and special effects and all the things. It doesn't always work the first time. All right, let's get everybody undercover, please. So what would you say is the biggest challenge in what you do and also maybe the biggest reward in what you do? Bringing it all together to make it all happen. There are so many things I have to juggle in my head and do to make sure that we all... Ooh, what was that? <clears throat> sorry, sorry. Go back a little bit here. <clears throat> so right there. Make it all happen. There are so many things I have to juggle. Does that, I can't tell if that's a staff. I guess that is a staff. It just looked so much like, sorry, this over here looked so much like a Sakari dagger that someone was holding. <laughs> I was like, is that a zealot? Like I'm about to, <laughs> about to go to war here on Passover. Um, it looked like a, a, like the same dagger that Simon the zealot would have had basically the Sakari order. Uh, but I think it is, a, I think it just is a staff that he's holding in my head and yeah, yeah. do to make sure that we all get that shot, especially when there's so many different departments. There's Tamar there and Philip. I think this is them at the money changers potentially. It's involved. So the challenge is making that all come together to actually film it, to actually get started is the hard part, right? Because you could talk about it forever to try to accomplish the goal. Background, keep going. There you go, thank you. And action. Over the years, what has The Chosen come to mean to you? Oh man, I mean, The Chosen's been my life for six years now. All right, let's make it rain. Yeah, I mean, the past over half a, a decade for him has been solely focused on the chosen really nobody cares if i went and first ad the latest marvel movie but all the time i get messages and people come up to me go thank you so much for your hard work on the chosen it has blessed us like you don't get that on any other tv show or a movie and so that's a pretty awesome experience super cool stuff all right well thank you behind the scenes guys for doing all that adam's amazing love 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 his stuff so really really cool thanks for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video and definitely leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already we'll see you guys on the next one peace